The rye sweetness is so dominant. It's fantastic. Hi, Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany. And today I have Kentucky Peerless Distillery Company Rye Whiskey. Two-year-old rye whiskey. Price at the distillery... 125 euros and I even bought it. All right, so Peerless started 1889. Um, there was a man named Henry Craver and he actually was one of the biggest producers of whiskeys back in the 1890s up until 1917. And then during World War II, he as well as many other distillers decided to stop producing whiskey because of the corn shortage. Then 1920 prohibition came, 1919 by the way, if I'm correctly informed in Kentucky, um, 1920 nationwide, and then he, after the prohibition, never started a distillery again. Fourth generation Corky and his son, um, Karsten, actually had the dream and desire to start a distillery. And so 2015, they bought this old building, I think it was even before that, in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, you have the main strip, the Louisville Slugger, um, the museum and so on, and you just keep on going just a little bit, I bet 200 yards, and on the right-hand side, you'll see Peerless Distilling Company. They have a 26-foot um, Veldrome column still. They distill at 66 ABV, but they put it into the barrel at 107 proof. 61% rye, 31% corn, and 8% barley. Everything there is computer controlled, which is really, really interesting. I did the tour. If you take a look at the Whiskey Jason on Facebook, you'll see on my albums of my videos and my um. No, excuse me. Actually, on this channel, I'm going to also put the video here online after I do this review. Uh, three days later, I'll do this maybe on a Tuesday and put the review on the, on the Friday. And you can actually watch me go through this distillery and watch the nice little lady that was my tour guide. The most important thing about this is, first of all, it's sweet mash. We know Sour Mash, Old Crow, Dr. Crow, 1870s, decided that the Sour Mash method was the best method to control the quality of the fermentation. You take a bit, the washback, a little bit of the old um, fermentation pot, you put it in the new, and therefore the germination, as well as the yeast, continues on in a so-called Sour Mash process. They, at Peerless, use the sweet mash every time it's new. So they take their wash, um, their fermentation tanks, they have to wash them out and they have to, to actually um, steam clean them. 200 degree water and steam is piped in there and it kills the bacteria as well as the yeast. So they start new each and every time, which is a very, very time-intensive uh, um, time and labor-intensive process. So this bottle was designed by Kasten, and um, it's actually here about $4 for the bottle, and for the um, stopper, it's another five. Very, very impressive stopper. I have not yet opened this bottle. I went to the tour, and we we're up at the um, area where they did the malting and so on, um, there was a little thing there, and this guy came up to me and says, Hi, I'm Corky. And I looked at him and said, You're the owner. He said, Yes, I am. And he says, Hey, Whiskey Jason, where do you come from? I wore my short shirt. And I said, Germany. He said, Great. Next week in New Orleans, we're going to have some negotiations with some um, partners so they can import our whiskey into Germany. I said, Wonderful. I'll do a review on it online, which I'm doing right now. He said, Oh, that's great. And shook my hand and so on. And when I bought the bottle, he said, let me, let me sign it. And he gave it to him, his son, and then he also signed it. So now I have a so-called so collector's edition. I have Corky's. Um, this is Carson's the fifth, and I have Corky's the fourth signature on this bottle. Um, I have one of the first 1,000 bottles. So this was 107.4 um, proof. 
and this was um, actually distilled on 2015 April on the 16th and it was it's, this is bottle 204 really really nice actually by the way came in this nice little carton and the important thing about the carton and about the distillery is always we have the DSP that's the distillery number KY for Kentucky and 50 they actually had a legal battle to get back this number 50 and they did and therefore they were the 50th re registered um, distillery in the United States of course they're not if they would have started new they would have been 20,000 something and so the 50 is very important on my hand I got a stamp that said 50 and so on so I did the entire tour very very nice very very interesting even in the house they have a warehouse you, very, the cleanest warehouse I've ever seen and they also started using the warehouse from Angel's Envy because they don't have enough space. Um, they do about, I think it's like 10 barrels a day. <laughs> Not that much compared to other distilleries. I'm, I'm going to call it a micro distillery. And in the tasting, and that's where I was a little bit um, worried at the beginning. I was a little anxious. Um, I had read online that um, you didn't get anything because they didn't have anything. Well, starting, in, um, starting with May 20th, 2000, 2017, I was there in July 2017, they actually have their first rye whiskey. And so we tried the new make. Whoops, I have to put it in here. <laughs> they have the new make, and they actually have um, the two-year-old rye whiskey, which was so fantastic, at least in my opinion, that I actually bought the bottle for 125 euros. So let's start off with the new make, first of all. I lost my lid, sorry. I've had like five, six different new makes. I've had Cavol, hated it. A Larceny was okay. A Maker's Mark was nice. Um, I, what else did I have for a new make? I've had this as a new make. Um, there was... I forgot, Buffalo Buffalo Tray something was from them. That might, might, have, been, might have been the Larceny and so on. Um, this is the best new make I've ever, ever smelled as well as tasted in my life. It's very peachy. It's unbelievably peachy. If you would have put it on my nose and said, hey, here's some peach schnapps, I would have went, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, it tastes like peach, peach schnapps. And there's a peach rye, rye-ness about it. Hmm. So, um, this is also 107 proof. Yet, no problem. Nice, good stuff. Oily, rich, magnific mag magnificent um, new make. I would almost like to drink this on a regular basis. Really, really good stuff. But then it gets better. <laughs> I paid $125 to have this dumb bottle. Originally, I wanted to take it to Germany. I wanted to do a bottle share. I divide it up into seven parts. Each people get each person gets about 10 CLs. I get the rest. Or even to 14. Each person gets 5 CL. I get the rest. Because it's the 750 liter bottles instead of the normal 700 liter bottles we have over here in Europe. And um, I can't open it. I have the signatures of the fourth and fifth generation of this bottle. This is now a collector's item. Mm. So I just brought over from my sampling two little bottles filled up with my um, from my tasting. Oh, the nose. I have a little bit of wood. I have a little bit of alcohol. This is, I'm still remembering, it's 53.7%. But yet the rye sweetness is so dominant. It's fantastic. I very seldom had a rye where I would go, hmm, oh, hmm. This is one of those. There's a little bit of alcohol and it's two years old. It's unbelievable. They use real 53-gallon barrels, not these tiny little quarter casks. Real barrels, and it all has to do with the wonderful product they have as the new make. That's the secret. Two years in the normal um, warehouse, no pressure, no temperature, exchanges more than the normal temperature of Kentucky offers. It's just a normal building, no a AC, no heating. But it's so nice. So let's try it. Mm. One of the best 53% rye whiskeys I've ever had. So I have over here 
Van Winkle Family Reserve Rye, 47%. Better, but not almost the same. I have Jack Daniels. I did this in my German video as well. I have Jack Daniels Single Barrel Rye, 47%. This is one of my favorite ryes out there in the market right now. I'm just going to have a little bit of a comparison here. So just so you can understand what I'm talking about. I love Jack Daniels Single Barrel Rye. I did a shootout, 16 different ryes. This was number three. Will it eight-year-old one? No, I'm sorry. Yes, it did. And then I did a second shootout. I did a five. Um, a totally expensive uh, rye whiskeys. <sighs> I love the nose. This is younger. This is sweeter. This is older. And it has more caramel. And even in the mouth. It has more depth and more dryness, which is more the, the wood coming through there. The tannins. It's very, very, very good stuff. But yet... Six and a half more ABV, and I almost like this better. It has a little bit of the youngness, a little bit of the bite, a little bit of the kick, but it's also sweeter, and it's a very, very, very good rye. It's unbelievable that it's two years old. Everyone that's tasted it blind has said, oh, that's like a six to eight year old rye whiskey, isn't it? And they go, mm, two. <laughs> it's amazing. It's very, very good stuff for the, for the age it is. So I'm going to give this a B plus. It's almost the A minus, but I'm still going to stay with my B plus. Very, very nice stuff. $125 for a bottle of rye whiskey, two-year-old. I have to give it a D minus. It still passes. This is very, very good stuff. Usually I would fail it, but I think it's a micro distillery. They're doing everything right. It's sweet mash. They're ticking all, all the boxes, everything I like. They're using real big barrels, and it's good stuff. And it's signed. Signature bottle. Hey, hey. Maybe if you get lucky, you can also get some signatures if you go to the distillery yourself. All right. So um, D minus for the value for money, but B plus for the definite taste experience. Maybe you can try Peerless Rye someplace. I think there were samples going around, at least Kentucky, for like $20 for a little shot. I'm not sure if I'd pay that much, but um, definitely worth the experience. I paid $20 to do the tour, which was interesting. Way too much compared to every place else. Um, but I did get to test here the new make as well as the rye, which was an experience, which was a really nice experience. And the guy that did it behind the bar was an experienced bartender that really knew his stuff. All right, Whiskey Jason here, Whiskey from the Viewpoint of an American. Thank you for liking, thank you for subscribing, thank you for telling others about this channel, the channel about rye, sorry, the channel about whiskeys which are rare and also very, very um, seldom, exotic. That's what I do. Thank you and see you either on the Tuesday or the Friday. And please, please watch the distillery video, video which I will either place before this or after this. I'm not sure. Okay. Wonderful planning, Jason. All right. See you soon. Bye-bye.